So let's pick a track from Spotify Top 50 playlist. Come. Genres, charts, Top 50. Uh, here we go. I see a Swedish artist on Top 50. M-N-E-K. This one. It's sounding quite danceable as well. Take a look. I could be slightly biased because one of the artists is from Sweden. Maybe I'm slightly biased just a little bit. But let's remake this one and see how it goes. Pop it. Let's fix the drums first. I think they are they were quite simple. So the first thing that we have to fix is a kick. We need kind of a thumb kick like this. Let's put it into the four to the floor. If you don't know where to find this type of kicks, I have a sample pack. Take a look at that one. I have quite a good amount of these guys. And then let's put a clap. It will be just on the offbeat and sounds like this. And if we just copy to whole track as well. Drum and clap. Uh, the other thing is that we have to fix kind of a return clap. So we will take this one, put it here. I think it should be somewhere around here. Duplicate it. Sh quiet as well. Good. Now we have to put just the open hi hat, something like this. This is just 909 hi hats, but slightly distorted again from my sample pack. Now I'm going to use drum bus because if I, I like to use drum bus for my hi hats if I want to do a lot of processing on it. And then let's copy this. Loop it. The only issue with this one is that in the beginning of this sample, we are lacking a little bit like initial hit, a short close type of hi hat so to make it grittier. Let's get something like that. I found this one from my sample pack. And let's duplicate it as well. Without this. And then we ha need kind of a shaker on the background, shaker loops, that's continuous shaker. So let's bring it something like that. Again, I'm using drum loop. I found the shaker from my drum samples and then just process it slightly and we're gonna side chain it to kick so that it ducks when the kick hits and slight EQ so it gets darker. So it sounds like this now. I'm volume up a little bit. All together. These are quite dark shakers, so we need to kind of balance it with a like more brighter version of the same shaker or similar shaker. Let's bring it something like that. Sounds like this, this one. Together. So they feel the background a little bit better and all together. And this should be also side chain to kick. And then the original track had this kind of really nice organic fills uh, continuously. So let's bring some kind of organic fill here. And this one was twice per, per bar. So we are going to duplicate this as well. And it sounds like this. It's a real organic sound. And if, together with the track. It's just a nice layer. And because it's organic, it's pretty focused sound. Uh, so it's easy to hear as well. And finally, we will complement this with another organic sound. This one is a bit more groovy. Complements the other organic sound as well. All together. That's it. That is the drums. But we need to process them slightly as a group. So the first thing that I'm going to do, group the drums together. But I'm going to kick the, keep the kick outside because I think in electronic dance music, kick doesn't belong to drums, kick belongs to low end bass. There's one single trick that I really like to do, is that first crush the drums and put it as a parallel chain, and then of course I will also put a reverb, a room reverb to them as well. So what I'm going to do first is my room reverb, I'm going to send it there, so we can fix the reverb. So what I'm going to do, solo the room.
I'm gonna make it brighter because there's a drum sound, a lot of bright sounds in it. Make it smaller. Maybe shorter. And I'm gonna play with the drums now so that I can hear how it affects. I just realized that I'm, I was sending the kick, so let's take off the kick and send the claps or drum group instead. Now it's like a, it feels like they're all sitting in the same room. There's one thing, simple trick. Uh, to make it even more stronger, a bit more like a tighter as well, a bit distorted at the same time. I'm going to create the return track. So what we are going to do, I'm just going to start with the glue compressor. So we are going to route these drums to that bus, that return channel. Let's call it actual drum bus, so it's easier to understand. This is not actually a bus, this is a return, but let's call it this way. And send a little bit drums there, not the kick again, and the drum bus. And then let's solve this. And then we are going to start really bring it down the levels i'm gonna bring all the way down i don't really care much and i'm gonna increase decrease the attack give it a little bit of makeup gain and then i'm gonna put an eq and clean up the mud on the super lows and i'm gonna bring another compression and before that i'm gonna put a overdrive as well so this i'm really sounding crashing the sound, drums at the moment You can definitely hear that shlop, like washy sound. I'm gonna bring that EQ one more time. Make it a bit darker. And now, what we are going to do, we're gonna solo these drums and start bringing in this one and see if we can find a sweet spot that makes the drums much more crunchier. Without this, it almost like brings the highs a little bit more, makes it a bit more crunchier, and so on. And all together now. And of course, I already have some kind of groove inside my inside my midis, so that's the reason that I didn't spend much time. But you can really apply any type of groups that grooves that you like. All you need to do is just click this button here and browse the groove library and bring in whatever you like and apply it and these ones were the drums fast simple yet sounding clean and crisp at the same time the important sound i think probably the most important sound in this track is the bass and the layers that are sitting on top of bass so we will start that one immediately afterwards so the notes looks like this uh, for the sub part, actually, I excluded some of the notes that jumps higher in the regular sub. So for the sub, we need something a bit more stable, just providing us this deep bass sound. So what I'm going to do, basically, bring I'm in a serum and activate both those layers, put the filter down, and it will be a very aggressive filter. So I want this really, really super low end, so the sub part of the sound. And I'm going to tune them one octave below, like this. And if we play now... You can already hear that there's really deep bass sound. So what is happening here that I want to have kind of kind of uh, envelope. So it's slightly plucky, but it doesn't need to be that plucky. And I give it a slight release so that we have at least this deep sound going on. And then the second thing will be bringing down this uh, second envelope, putting into our cutoff so that we will have this slight plucky sound ever slightly. It doesn't need to be that aggressive. Just like that. And let's give it drive. Give it resonance. Let's put it in mono. And then we're going to put a distortion. And then we're going to compress this because this moves up and down a lot. So we would like to compress it as much as we can. And then once this is done, I'm going to just bring an EQ here to clean up some of the super lows. 
and some of the super highs as well. Again, I'm really only interested in this area of the system. I don't need anything else than this, and I'm going to bring in a compression, and this one will be the side chain to the kick, so that when the kick hits, we are ducking this. And I'm going to use look ahead, so I'm going to duck before the kick hits. Very deep, if you are not having headphones, you will probably not be able to hear the sound, So, or if you don't have the good speakers, and together with the kicks and drums sounds like this. The sub bar is ready, and then we have this second layer of the bass, which is the body layer. And it is much, much grittier and more aggressive as well. So let's fix that. First, let's take a look at the differences. So like I mentioned earlier, this, this note that jumps up here, that is a bit more interesting. And this, the notes are ever slightly different uh, because of that. But still, the idea is still the body bulk of the sound or the melody is the same. Let's solo this and bring in our serum. So the first thing that I want is like this kind of more square wave-ish, deeper, deep house sound. So the first thing that I'm going to go for, find a basic move here. And uh, because it has this kind of wave table, you can move around until you get sound this kind of really square wave, but it's slightly, slightly like a saw tooth. I really like how this one sounds. And let's add a filter on top and put the filter to 24 dB. Put this one octave below. Cool sound. And then I'm going to activate the sub and pick the square wave here as well and activate all the filters here so everything goes into the filter and then I'm activate the second oscillator but this one I'm interested more like a kind of FM sound here which is the first uh, really uh, the wave table here you can see the small square waves inside a kind of a sine wave so it makes this weird table and if we play one more time really interesting nice sound and I'm gonna add a slight noise ever let's pick something like uh, I don't know bright white maybe and bring the level down so this is the first step the second step will be first playing with the envelope so the sound gets a bit slightly slightly like a plug and give it a bit release and then we're gonna pick a very aggressive envelope like this one this will be really really aggressive and then on top of that we're gonna take this and put in the cutoff and bring the cutoff down and then may open this up so this movement will be really ag a lot now we can feel that aggressive sound and then we're gonna drive it give it a bit fat you can definitely start to feel this really gritty aggressive sound and then what we are going to do is really go for the effects. The effects part is also important because we need to distort this sound a bit more. So I'm going to first move the distortion above and then we're going to pick something a bit more like a clean but still aggressive. I feel like this X shaper really works really nicely for this one. Something like this. And then we're going to give a bit hyper dimension. Uh, not this one, not the hyper, but giving a slight uh, openness, a bit stereo feel, because we already have sub, that is mono. But this sound, we can make it ever slightly uh, stereo. And then we can compress this. And then I'm going to activate EQ and boost the highs of it. The only thing that I feel like this maybe should be something like this. So it's a bit more aggressive. Like that. And once we have done this, we have to layer this nicely so that we don't really cross on top of each other with the sub base. So what I'm going to do, first we can EQ, bring it in here. So like I mentioned, we don't want the low end of this sound because we already have sub so we're gonna cut those off and then i'm gonna slightly boost that on probably here and then cut super highs as well again super highs i don't i'm not really that interested because we will have another layer and i don't know why i have this activated 
I don't want the sound with reverb, at the moment at least. And together. We are getting there. The one thing that we are missing is the comp sidechain compression. I'm just going to copy it from the actually the sub. This one will be a bit less aggressive. This is ready. Now we have the body of the sound. It makes a bit more sense, but there is also a high layer, kind of this square wave layer that makes the sound really deep house -ish. so this yeah, that's what we're gonna fix now for this layer the notes are the same like the previous one uh, but i'm g again gonna go for the basic mini uh here and then pick something like uh like this so that we have this uh, square wavy sound and then i'm gonna this time activate unison so that the sound gets wider so let's solo this and play it this should be super plucky so i'm gonna make it super short and plucky something like this and then we're gonna turn on the filter and take the second envelope and make the same plug envelope here and control shift alt click so that it's one-sided and then let's drive this a little bit and put the 24 TB as well fat and a little bit compression A little bit EQ. The sound itself was a bit also kind of added reverb on top of that. So I'm going to pick something like a whole reverb here. Let's make it dark and let's make it shorter as well. Something like this. And let's send it a little bit there. Something like this. We can adjust this one later on depending on how we feel. But if we play together everything now. One thing that we forget, let's cut down all the lows of this guy. We don't need them. Final thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to group them up and move the kick even here. So that I'm grouping everything and then inside this I'm going to group even the bass one more time. So this will be our basis. I'm going to call it bass and then kick and this will be the low end. So having kick here makes much more sense because the bass and kick is really relevant to each other. Uh, and I'm going to go here, put the glue compression. I'm going to, I want to glue all these sounds together. So let's play together first. <laughs> And just like that, we already made the like, uh, let's say 50% of the track. This is the like the really backbone of the tracks. These are really carrying the whole track. The rest is just filling up nicely, putting up the melodies. Uh, while we are on to this melody, I think it's good to fix the whole plug because this was the bass layer. And then there was a like a really nice top layer on this top on top of that to make it even deeper and more lively, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create one more and then we layer those really tiny sounds, but yeah, nice sounds in this meantime. So let's create that. So the notes are the still same. Basically, we are utilizing the same notes. And what I'm going to do, pick this one. I'm actually going to copy the one from the body here. We are going to use the same wave table. So let's make it a bit easier for us uh, and open this up again. The thing that we are going to do first, put them um, one octave above. So this will be much higher sound and turn off the sub and the noise. And then here, the second oscillator, we are going to tune seven half semitones. It means that we have this kind of power chord progression all the time. And the rest will be more or less the same. And if I play it now, I'm going to open up the cutoff, of course, a little bit more. But if we play it now. Mm -hmm. 
We had this really nice bright sound. The thing that is missing is the I think the original sound has this re really super fast pitch modulation. So I'm going to take this and put it on top here. And I'm going to again shift alt click. So it's one side go all the way up. And the same thing I'm going to do the second uh, oscillator. I see that my camera is dead. So let me just fix this one and fix the camera later on. And the same idea here. Something like this. And the thing that I want to do now is actually put an EQ so that I don't need super lows that we are hearing here. It's due to the pitch modulation. Just like that. We can maybe decrease the cutoff a bit more here. Something like this. And this is the first layer. We have two more layers to fix the whole sound, but let me fix the camera first and then come back. Once we have done this, I'm going to duplicate it one more time. And this time we're going to pitch it even more. So this will be even brighter in that sense. So let's open this up. And what I'm going to do, put into the two and then like this. And this one will be actually the same. So if we play one more time. And I'm going to bring down these uh, pitch modulations a bit now. Bring down the level of this one. Open this up more. So together. Volume this down a bit. And if I play all together, it will make a bit more sense. So let's play. Without them. The one thing that is also on the sound is actually a little bit uh, echo. I think I already have one here. Let's put it in the ping pong mode. And this should be really high pitched. So I'm going to put it something like this. So it will be really bright uh, layer. And then I'm going to send these layers there. The one thing that we also forget that this is our high layer. So we can actually make them unison. So it is like uh, giving us more space. So let's solve them so that you can hear a bit more what we are doing. Let's solve this first. And let's just take the second one as well. We can keep this one like this. We can play around a bit with the other one as well. I know these are tiny adjustments, but it really makes the sound much nicer. And then I'm going to send them to the hole a bit. Really nice. There's one final thing that we still need to add. Uh, I know it's a lot of layers and stuff, but it really makes sense when it comes. This kind of really smooth square sound. Like I think it was from the original organ or something else, I don't know. But I'm just going to make it with the serum, it's easy to make as well. So let's bring serum in. This time I'm using the notes from the sub bass, so it's a bit like a, this. these two are excluded, so we don't go so super bright. And this is really simple sound, so what we are going to do, I'm going to just go here and we have this kind of triangular wave here. We're going to take this and put it in the octave above, so it will be bright but simple sound. And the second one, we're going to go to basic shapes and pick another really triangular wave. They have this perfect version of it. And this one will be one octave and then semi uh, seven semitones up. So we have this kind of uh, still power chord idea. And then we are going to put the low filter like this, 24 dB. And if I play this one solo, 
<laughs> this is a really nice sound, really. What I'm gonna do is just distort slightly. And then I'm gonna put a slight compression. And of course I want to make the envelope slightly like this. It gives this kind of really Game Boy sound almost, if that makes sense, and together. And all together now with the bass. Really cool. Now we have, I will say, more or less 70% of the track. And the only thing that is missing is the pianos, that like a chord piano progression, which just makes this track. So let's put the piano. So the piano part is really one of the hardest part to nail it because every piano is different and sounds different. The only thing that you can really do more or less is just EQ it slightly. I'm gonna make it simple for us. So I'm gonna just bring in Ableton's own grand piano so that we're gonna use that. And I'm gonna use also Arturia piano. They have this kind of really nice piano there. So let's bring them up. There is really not much at all there. Like I said, it's just piano sample. So let's do it. So basically the first part is, let me show you the chord progression. Looks like this. We are just really simple. I wouldn't say super simple, but in the end still kind of simple chord progression. And the first part is like a, a Bilton's own grand piano. Sounds like this. The only thing that I did is basically put a little bit overdrive and play with the parameters so we get this really bright sound. And layer it with the Arturia piano. That one sounds like this. This really gives kind of a lower end, still bright sound is in the hard played piano, it's still bright, but gives a bit harder part. And then the main issue here was the tail was too long because I was really pressing too hard. So I put a gate so that we are cutting off or turning off the sound after a while. I played with the saturators and so on, and but I felt like in the way, in the end, this was the, the best sounding way. And then finally, I took another piano sample, and this time I cut the like a transient off, but took the sustained tail so that we have this kind of nice additional um, long tail under it. And all together. And together with the track. So this is more or less the like the body of the track. What we need to do the composition now to put them around and support with the effects so that we have the sound or everything ready. So let, let's put them up and talk about the composition a little bit. So what I did really take the kind of the second half of the track so that everything is first quiet after the break and then it goes to like a climax and then goes another break and another climax. So the to make that we the first thing that I added actually the piano here, not piano, the pads. This is like really simple strings. Looks like this is basically a soft tooth, a really high pitched, nothing else. And then we had this brake pads, sounds like this. Really, really smooth sound, I would say. And then it was just a serum patch, to be honest. Again, to sign triangular wavyish stuff, similar to the one that we made before. And then the final ARP, this one was nice and uh, it looks like this. It's almost like a Melodic Techno Arp, to be honest. And of course, like you do the Melodic Techno Arp to Soul Tooth and a really fast, plucky sound with no effects at all here. And I'm opening up this one, like depending on which part of the track that we are talking about. Effects part was really simple and this just like uh, crashes all the way, 
like in almost every in four bars and then you have the reverse versions and then you have reverse and this version like a normal and reverse like that and then white noise fills like that and then I added with the serum edition white noise is also just white noise and then let me see if I'm missing anything I think I'm missing in the drums that I added this ambient drum somewhere yeah this one was the first one the snare just snare fills here and there and then we had this kind of a rim shot to make this like a big ambient sound really just rim shot from my sample pack again and with a reverb on top and then yeah that's it and the main idea here is like the break uh, and then climax break drop and the break part is there is not really too much automation either most of the things are just like a simple composition changes and then uh, adding here and there so what i'm going to do please start then and of course we, i added a cappella from the original track there's a bit slight phasing issues because i use the, the original track to get the cappella but yeah let's do start the end i can open up in meantime show you around if there's something in it and we can hear it so let's take a look <laughs> And yeah, that was it. And I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. By the way, I have another channel that I just started and it's more like a to the point short tutorials. Uh, if you are interested, I will edit on the screen and the link below. Take a look at that. And if you like the samples that I use, it's mostly from my sample pack. You can take a look at that one as well. Other than that, I will stop talking now and catch you in the next one. Goodbye.